And from the nation's capital. Ooh, that sounded good. Mm-hmm. Congressman Mike Johnson is here. Hey, Mr. Mike, how are you today? Hey, my friends. Good to hear your friendly voices this yeah. morning. I'll okay, you, so a long week. I just need to ask you one question. Does We've your got, arm hurt from all the twisting? We, <laughs> we've got about six, seven minutes, maybe. Tell me about the last 36 to 48 hours of your life. You know what? The last 36 to 48 hours has felt like four weeks. Let me just tell you about the last day, last 24. I, I can hardly recount it has happened but my wife last night i said kelly one day i'm going to write a book about this day because it was just surreal robert you and i've talked about surreal moments in washington before 24 hours ago exactly to this moment i got a phone call a cell phone from the president and uh mike 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 we got to talk mike because look i've been i'm not holding on the on the vote okay I, that, that's publicly known everybody understands that because I am a conservative, I ran on repealing Obamacare, as so many of us did, and the president did as well. But the bill in its form 24 hours ago, I just felt like was not going to do the job. There were, it was not repealing many of the mandates in Obamacare that have been the, the primary reason that, that premiums have gone up so high. Excuse me, so Mike, when, pardon me, yeah. and you can get back to this, but I've got yeah. to know. When the president of the United States is on the phone, yeah. when he's called you, and basically your response to him is no, how does he respond? He doesn't give in. You know, he wrote the art of the deal. He's a negotiator. In some way, he, he kind of uh, enjoys it. And I do, too, because that's my nature. Robert, the phone call lasted 20 minutes, and he told me at the end of the call, he said, Mike, I have to spend more time on the phone with you than any other human being in the last month of my life, Okay. <laughs> okay, I, yes, Mr. President, I know. And, and at the end of the conversation, he got, he called in, he was in the Oval Office when he called me. He called in Vice President Pence. He called in Secretary Price. And I had the three of them on the phone for, you know, 20 minutes. And I respectfully explained my objections. I said, gentlemen, you know me. I know Mike Pence well. Uh, y'all know that I'm a real conservative. And these are my problems. I haven't been public. I have denied all interviews, Robert, except for you guys over the last two weeks, because I don't want to do the president any harm. I don't want to do the party any harm. I haven't aired any of this publicly. I've just kept it to myself and did, quietly did you, tried to negotiate. Did you feel any, like, if you don't do this, Mike, we're going to get you? I'll say this about the president. I mean, there were no threats at all. I mean, we're we're friends, we're allies, and he knows that. And he said, Mike, I, I need you. And I said, Mr. President, I am trying to get to it. I promise you I am. And the negotiations today, I think, will we'll, we'll go large way in that regard so i spent a total of three hours with the president yesterday wound up going to the to the white house we met in the cabinet room freedom caucus and all those guys and uh we've just been as you said wrestling this out over the last day i mean it's been going on for weeks what's in the bill now what would have to come out of the bill what would they have to put into the bill whew to get mike johnson's and the other conservatives like yourself to get your backing? Well, listen, I'm going to tell you, at, at, at this moment, I, I'm, I'm further down the road than I was w- when I had the phone conversation yesterday morning with the president, because they have our holdout, and he and he complimented us on this, Robert. He said, you have, I want to compliment you on standing strong. You've shown backbone, and you made the bill better. And that was the president's own words. He said the bill is better now than it was. And, and the way that it's better is that we've been able to, to add in the bill the repeal of the essential health benefits package, which is one of the primary reasons that, prim- that, that premiums have gone up across the country. That's the 10 essential benefits that everybody has to have in every plan, according to Obama, and, uh, Obamacare. And, you know, it's maternity coverage for, you know, men in their 20s. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense, and, and everybody knows that. So we're going to be able to repeal that and, and take it out. We're also going to have high-risk pools and um, the, the, many of those mechanisms. We don't have time to get in the weeds on it. But there's a number of, of things now that are, that are part of this package that are going to actually drive down premiums. And at the end of the day, that's all of our concern. We want to have lots of plans, lots of competition, lots of choices. And at the end of the day, we have to have lower prices in, in health care. And, and I think that we're getting much more closer now to, to achieving that objective. You're voting in 10 seconds. How are you voting? Thankfully, I'm not voting in 10 seconds. <laughs> if, you, if you are voting in 10 seconds, how are you voting? I guess right now for the first time since this entire debate began, I guess I'm leaning yes. But I'm, I'm going to tell you that, that I'm going to have another conversation with the president. He's supposed to call me here shortly. Okay. And I'm going to tell him uh, some things that we need at Barksdale.
uh, F-35 and some other things. I mean, he loves negotiating. I'm going to negotiate. Oh, Mr. get President, some stuff I, I for us, you. Mike. If <laughs> That's how this works. But what about the Senate? If it makes it, if it can get Mike Johnson's backing, what chance does it have in the U.S. Senate? That's the big question, Robert. I, I can tell you that if the president engages with the Senate, as he has with us, respectfully, you know, but, but uh, with, with great... Uh, I mean, he's he's stubborn in the way that he do, does this, and, and, and you know, that's a, that's a good thing. That's the ideal, right? If he engages them personally, one-on-one, like he has with us, the, the, those of us that have philosophical objections to all this, uh, I, I think that he can be very successful, and that the bill that comes back over may not differ very much. It may actually be improved uh, than, than the one that we're sending over. I certainly hope that that's true, because we'll all have to vote on it one more time. In other words, don't underestimate Donald Trump. He is a one-of-a-kind public figure. There's never been a president like him. Uh, there never have been a, a, anybody in elected office like him in the history of the country. He is one of a kind. And when he, when he told us last night, I'm done, I'm done negotiating, look, I believe him. You know, I mean, it, there, the, the bill in its essence is not going to change any longer because he said that's it. And, and uh, I don't think he's bluffing. And it's the highest stakes game of chicken in American politics. Uh, if, if, you know, if, if y'all if fa- not, if y'all don't vote for it, we're just going to stay with Obamacare. Is what he's saying. That's literally what he told us last. But do you think and, that's uh, do you think that's true, or do you think that any further health care reform would come from the House or the Senate and not from the White House? Look, I spent a, a half hour with the speaker last night, and Paul Ryan told me himself, looked me in the eye, and he said, "Mike, this is it." The president said, "It's this bill or nothing." I know it's not perfect. I don't like it either. Would it, we, you know, in a perfect world, we'd do this a lot better. But this is all we're going to get, and I'm telling you, he's moving on to other issues. We are going to own Obamacare if this thing goes down, and I, you know, we're going to see. We're about to see. Mike Johnson, owner of Obamacare. How's that sound? Uh, no, no. <laughs> what time is the vote scheduled for later today? We're in session in a few moments, and um, we don't know yet. It's, it's uh, all this is very fluid today, and we all have. So things are tonight. still changing. People are still throwing ideas out. There still uh-huh. is, despite saying no more negotiation, there really is kind of negotiation still going on. I'm calling you from a small room uh, in, in the congressional gym. Uh, we, there was a bunch of here working out this morning. There's still discussions going on right outside the door of where I'm, I'm speaking with you mm-hmm. uh, among members. So well, listen, we wow. we it's, appreciate it's your time. time. We appreciate your time more than we can say. I know you're the bit. Bu- in our mind, you're the busiest man in America. Well, the second busiest man in America yeah, right get, now. Get some ice and put it on that arm for us, okay? <laughs> there you go.